Hello and welcome everybody, I'm Wapra Pavarian and this is David Derry for CK3 number 90, the 1.5.1 update. I'm very excited for this one, uh, primarily because it lets us now look towards what will be fixed after the 1.50.2. I believe we are on 0.2 uh, update currently and this will be released today, I don't know exactly when, I assume maybe at 3pm or something. Either way, I'm excited for this because the fixes that it brings are of course important, but this update actually brings significantly more some things that I'm very excited for and some things where I'm rather hot and cold you could say, but I am even more excited because what this means is usually they would release these patches on the same day as the genuine dev diary, so as the regular one. Now this one is released right now, giving me the hope that maybe next week on Tuesday we will actually be hearing about the future plans going forward for CK3. Uh, is that the case? Will that happen? I don't know. Either way, let's explore what 1.5.1 brings and then we can move and hope that the next week brings even better news when it comes to future content of CK3. Now, they are talking a bit about all of the heraldry stuff that the community has done. There's a lot of great stuff. World's best boss. I have seen so much of this as well. I love this one in particular. Peace was never an option. One of my favorites. There is this really good subreddit called CK Heraldry. I very much uh, am somebody that lurks there. I have been sitting around there, so I would advise to do the same. There's a lot of high quality stuff there. Can you pass the pie? Is also a really good content creator. She has made all of these very intricate patterns. I am very much in love still to this day when it comes to the COA editor and it is also one of those things that as somebody that is interested and that also covers Victoria 3 I will tell you I have always been a bit sad that Victoria 3's flags are not as manageable not as adjustable as now CK3's COAs are indeed thanks to this editor now either way what else was changed let's take a look at this you can see it right here they have changed the lighting within the court scene significantly. I will tell you right now, this was something that you always need to anticipate. I am 100% certain that going forward, they will be altering it even further. They will be altering it until this game is no longer supported. Is that is just the way these sort of things work. Uh, what we have right here is 1.502. So this in comparison is much lighter. So this right here, the original is much lighter. The shadows don't really fall very natively. You can see it right here. These people now have actual genuine shadows. I do hope that it works quite dynamically as well. But just in general, they have certainly changed the way the light works. You can see it here as well. When you compare this guy, right, to this guy right here, this is very, very different. And I do want to point out, by the way, even with all these changes in mind, uh, the Paradox at the very least says that this patch will be compatible with your save game. I hope that it's compatible with my long-running roleplay series because otherwise I will be abandoning it and see you in hell. But either way, the codes doubtlessly now look much nicer. Um, you can see this one actually went and became brighter. Hmm. Is it the top windows, I guess? They must have enhanced the way this light falls in here. This one kind of feels weird, but I can't describe why, and it's probably just me being confused. Um, it, it does certainly look very different in the sense that uh, it is much lighter on the right side rather than on the left side. This chord looks nice. Look at this. This is very atmospheric. I, I like that chord. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so all of these chords basically got adjusted. There will be more lighting adjustment. I have no doubt about it. That is the way this works, as I said earlier. And then here we have, honestly, something that I am absolutely in love with. The Throne of Solomon. This piece is incredible. I, I love looking at this. I, I, I can't imagine that anybody doesn't love looking at this. This looks incredible. So, uh, quite frankly, I really do hope that I can get that throne. Because that is an amazing looking throne. My god, I, I can't stop looking at this. This is incredible. But it is not the only thing that actually is getting new 3D assets. You can see that the sword models right here, these are African, Northern, Northern, Step, Step, and Byzantine and African weaponry. And you can see that they are now quite significantly altered as well, which should also be visible in the dual interface when you actually utilize one of them. So we have a lot more variety to clobber one another with now. The Oliphant also now has its own unique model. Listen. I'm a big fan of them fundamentally doing this, saying, yes, we are patching stuff, yes, we are fixing things, but we're also giving new content. I think um, that ultimately this is one of the big steps. I'm a big fan of this. I also thought about this, of course. I do hope and I do think that in the future, when, for example, a flavor pack comes out for a specific region, let's say for Russia, I do hope that in the future, when that flavor pack comes out, there will be in the free update to Royal Court basically at that time also be a throne room that if you own Royal Court you can then have for the Russian region. That would be really cool, I would be a big fan of this because that is how you expand on the already existing content. Um, 
They are also more events. They are changed events. We're going to see that in the changelog in a bit as well. This is Feast, shiny trinkets. Let's take a look at this. I look around the lively room. Fires are roaring. The drinks are pouring. Delectable treats are being turned into belly timber and the mood is high. In a dark corner, catching the flicking li uh, flickering lights, the glint of the gilded red's tail has not escaped me. It appears abandoned on one of the side tables and is positively calling my name. Kaiser Heinrich sure seems to be well off. He couldn't possibly miss this tiny trinket. Well, we can steal a trinket now. I like the more involvement, further involvement of uh, trinkets, of items within events. So this is a big topic for me, without a doubt. Then right here, we have Feast, Artifactual Liability. In the midst of festivities, the captain of the guard hurries towards me. My lord, it seems that someone has set fire to the throne of Charlemagne. Excuse me. The evidence points towards my lord's vassal, Prince Archbishop Gebhard, who has been acting strange this evening. He glances in Gebhard's direction. What would my lord have me do? For some reason, the hem of the captain's garment are slightly singed. How curious. So, we could blame Prince Archbishop Gebhard for this. We could also bring him to us and then he can face a challenge. Or, we can simply say the captain did it. I believe you know more than you let on, Captain. I like this. These are nice events. They involve characters. They involve artifacts. This is one of these connections that have to be made. The bridges that have to be crossed to actually have valid content. To have good content. The beautiful game, weighing the risks. What do we have here? It is with some anxiety that my trusty valet informs me of the rules and regulations of the coming event. As it happens, as it happens this game of so-called football is very widely played and encompasses all manner of people. Supposedly, both sides endeavor to move the ball, as the pig's bladder is known, to the side of the village that their group is not defending by any means necessary. That final part was intoned with significant gravitas, and the explanation was swift. Whilst death is rare, injury is not. Right, so we can participate in football now, we can play football, I like it, these are the casual events that aren't too bad, of course you can also say, I don't play with the commoners, but this is one of the things where I will always support more and more events. Um, I believe there are a couple more here, of course, we don't need to take a look at all of them, you can see that there are more events for items, more events just for flavor when it comes to cultural stuff, this right here also has to do with, uh, you know, a rusty tool, choices, choices, if you straighten out the blade, it could be useful dagger, etc, you could also make it into a spear, so you have options of creating artifacts with these events as well. There is a lot going on when it comes to new events, I think this is a great addition, I'm a big supporter of this, making it in via the free upcoming update that is, you know, again coming out today. That is, uh, I believe, 1.52, right? Yeah, indeed. At least I think so. Uh, oh no, it's 1.51. My apologies. Either way, what we're looking at are these changes. They have new 3D assets, they have new lighting, and they have then also everything related to these events. Now let's talk about the changelog. And we will be talking about things that I'm not all too happy with. We will be talking about things that were overdue, of course. Um, Let's jump in. I marked the most important stuff. It is, of course, as always, linked in the description, meaning that if you want to take a look at it, you can do that at any given moment. AIs will now leave factions more quickly when they are pleased with you as their liege. This one is very important. I couldn't describe how often I've looked at a, fa a faction and said, Come on, I just made you happy. I know it's going to take two or three months, but I need you to leave right now. This decision-making process by the AI was always very, very slow, and it could be cumbersome because if you made people happy right before they started to be able to send an ultimatum, they would still be in that group despite wanting to leave the next time the AI would, ch you know, check whether they should leave. In this case, they now do it more quickly, and I think that is a great change. This should make it so that a lot of people can be much happier about things going on in general. And you can also see that claim infections were changed, the AI will be less likely to press a claim and they have 80 opinion off if they have 60 opinion of their leash, for example. Big fan of this. The rebalancing of factions was without a doubt required. The AI now considers faith hostility when selecting claimants. I have seen a bunch of posts that basically were saying, my realm that is Catholic is putting a relative of mine onto the throne that is uh, Norse. What the hell is going on? Obviously, that wasn't intended. Obviously, that now has changed. Added a game rule, Empire Obscurity, that makes empires that control below 20% of their de jure counties be destroyed. They should solve empires sticking around forever as micro-realms. Huge fan of this. Seriously, uh, you will see it often with the Byzantine Empire, for example. They are completely destroyed, but they still hold, because it's such a huge area, a piece of the Byzantine Empire's de jure lands, meaning that they will never splinter. Now they will. I like it, keep it up. Forcing same vote by using a hook on an elector will now last 100 years instead of 5. Also a big fan of this, primarily because it makes it so that you don't need to wait and then guess when you're gonna die so that you actually make them vote for you. No, now instead it is basically a lifelong promise. I like it, again, big supporter of this. Just gives you a more steady approach. You don't need to game it, you can just use your tools that you have at your disposal. Only house sets will now demand the return of artifacts if there's only a house claim. 
big fan because the AI has been very nasty when it comes to demanding items in general, and you will see that they changed even more about this. The AI will no longer demand artifacts from players they like a lot and will no longer keep asking after you've refused once. Boom. This could fix nothing else to say. Tweaked various factors in the war for England in order to reduce the chances of Harold winning. Good change as well, currently Harold wins every single time. Northern Norse legacies can now be gotten by din uh, dynasts of any culture descended from Norse as well as Norse culture itself. This is big because whenever you would go away from Norse currently or in the old build, it would make it so that you would basically lose this option of going down into this road. Now if you, you know, hybridize, if you diverge and whatnot, all of a sudden you can still take them. Big fan as well. This one. I'm very negative about and honestly I never have I'm not a man of uh, you know that like for no reason whatsoever goes into a very strong opinion I have strong opinions but I try to have a reason and with this one I need to play test it I need to test what it actually feels like but initially I'm certainly not in favor of this tribal kings and emperors can now access the royal court but it plays differently okay let's listen let's hear them out I know there are people that were basically saying I would like to use this as a tribal ruler as well the expected grander is always the same as their current grander level. It cannot be above or below. This basically gets rid of the money sink that the courts are designed to be completely declawing the entire mechanic. Completely taking it out of, behind the shed and basically, you know, dealing with it, sending it up to the farm upstate. Um, I understand why they did it. The economy as a tribal is significantly different. You don't utilize money nearly as much. You don't gain money nearly as much unless you do raid, which is would even be much more man uh, mandatory if you actually had to abide by the expected grander level, right? It does that, so it makes it so that you are not really expected to sink your money into this much as you are when you are feudal. But it also makes it so that you can't get the below or above bonuses or malices, which, I mean, I get it. Again, I really do get it, but it declosed the entire mechanic. It, th this is uh, this is not comparable to genuine tribal assemblies, to genuine tribal mead halls or whatever you want to call it. Obviously, there is a tribal chieftain that has a building in which you know if something is going down, that is where he talks. Basically, hold court if uh, holds court, if you will. But it's not comparable to the feudal model that we have. The feudal model also has a bunch of issues, but don't worry about that too much. What I'm saying is, um, you basically get a court and you get grander bonuses, and it's a tribal court. But there are no expectations, meaning there's no pressure on you, meaning there's no benefit on it because you will just always be on the same level. It declaws the entire mechanic. All amenity levels except the first two are blocked if playing tribal. What does that mean? That means that A, you can't actually have a court that is as, you know, amazing as the courts that are of feudal rulers just based on your amenities. Okay, fair enough. It's not a bad idea. That's not terrible. But it also just means that uh, you can still reach that level. Let's say you start speaking Greek as a court language, you get prestige from that, what or grander, whatever the amount is, uh, obviously I can't tell. Then you have level 2 amenities for all of your amenities, and on top of that, you can pillage. You just get as many amazing artifacts as you possibly could, and all of a sudden you're still looking at court grander 8, 9, or 10. <sighs> so basically, what I'm suggesting is that uh, giving tribals courts buffs a playstyle that didn't need to be buffed and makes it so that the actual distinction that tribal societies should have they don't have it this is a this is a very this is my least favorite band-aid yet i'll be honest with you i get it people wanted this but this ain't it i it doesn't feel like it is it i i have to try it i have to test it but if you've played some royal court if you've min maxed it if you've checked it out then you will know having amazing artifacts can make up for your amenities almost wholesale meaning the restriction here basically just says you need to pillage more to get the artifacts it's i don't know not that big a fan amenity costs are greatly increased if tribal it was trivially cheap i mean i guess you can still again you can raid things are very easy to make money they only have access to one core tri uh, type tribal this one can be kept a feudalizing but it doesn't give many benefits and the ai will switch out of it fairly quickly fair enough um yeah, no, I'm I'm not a fan of this. I am not a fan of this. It feels like it feels like they had a vision where they said these are feudal mechanics. And then other people said, okay, these are feudal mechanics, but now playing tribes feels bad. I will tell you, if you want to make tribals feel good, um 
A, there is a direct way of making you feel good by immediately, well not immediately, but by feudalizing and then having the experience. Or B, you change tribal gameplay, but this this ain't it. I'm, I'm not a fan. I am just not a fan. I'll, I'll have to be honest with you. I know, I think I know where they were coming from here. I can't say that, that I like this. I, I don't enjoy this at, at all. It, it's a hampered mechanic. It's... I hope that the influence that it has primarily on the frequency of inspired people and the code language grander gain isn't too significant. Those are my main worries. And um, we've seen it with mods like the Dukes have codes mods where everything was screwed because everybody adopted one language. The more kings you have in tribal areas, they could all start speaking Greek and all of a sudden the Byzantines don't need to invest anything and they will always be at 100 grander. I hope that tribals are excluded. I, something like this. I don't know. I, I dislike this greatly. Not a fan at all. Um, AI. Let's take a look at the AI changes. AI should take player units into account for supply situation when selecting target provinces. Very, very good. Less, you know, attrition is always better. AI stops to raise levies with very small amounts of troops. Very good as well. Those would just get wiped. A combat evaluation only count available subunit stacks if they are close enough. God bless. I hope that the AI is smart about choosing battles. I hope that they... Uh, all of a sudden, maybe are better when it comes to Crusades. That is a, a big topic, of course. In Great Holy Wars, the AI will be more focused on fighting about the war goal and less likely to shy away from confrontation due to numerical weaknesses. We'll see how this goes. <laughs> Listen, I am a known anti-micro radical. And I will tell you right now that uh, I'm not sure Crusades can be fixed. I just hope that the AI will be acting better. That, that's all I can say. Crusades will always be a spam fest. Let's hope that... It is a much more logical spam fest now, at the very least. What exactly this means, we will see and play. Instructed the AI to adjust its code amenity spending in a more responsive manner. Very good. Let's not have them go bankrupt. AI will no longer go to war for artifacts that are below masterwork, cursed, or that it cannot use, like toys. Big fan of this as well. This is really, really good. Makes it so that the AI will use these abilities, you know, these CBs, but only if they are actually worth it. Lower the AI cooldown on pay homage to two years from three, meaning that you will see it more often, meaning that in general you will just have a richer experience in the game. Again, big fan. Performance significantly improved the performance of all portraits and in the throne room. Huge fan. Huge, 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 huge fan. Because as soon as you use CFP, as, as soon as you use EPE, the throne rooms will have trouble performing. Hopefully, this being, you know, cleaning it up a bit makes it so that all of a sudden, with these mods, you still get a good performance. Now here we have the interface. Recruited prisoners can now be forced to take the vows when negotiating release. Big fan of this. This is really neat, mostly because it just adds so much to roleplay possibilities. Now art. Uh, improved the lighting, of course, in the throne rooms. Fixed COA on shield artifacts being mirrored. Indeed they were. Added unique icons for all different types of inspirations. Also a big fan of that. Just adds a bit of flavor. Then all this stuff is that we saw above. It's all the 3D stuff. The throne of Solomon. Big fan of that, of course. Added a hybrid culture art pattern for options that can mix from two different cultures. Interested in that, but I need to see. Also, adjusted eyelids that were sometimes causing characters to have overly squinty eyes. Big fan, they're rolling it back there, they're changing it up. Very, very neat. Localization, fixed arrow string and Spanish inspiration sponsored toast. I read a lot of complaints from Spanish speaking players that uh, basically the localization was completely screwed. I hope this fixes it because, of course, that is always a, a bit, you know, agitating. Now, game content wise, added notification personal artifact claim and prestige loss after losing a war banner in battle. Huge fan of this. War banners, before that, weren't very interesting to me because there was very little interaction and very little driving factions, uh, factors that you had in this. You wouldn't ever go for this. You know, you couldn't go for your own war banner. Now you can. And this should be very cool. I hope that uh, I will be able to basically use this for roleplay purposes very significantly. Big, big fan. The further you integrate artifacts into roleplay, the better it is. Again, very good change. Added a new yearly event about medieval football, we saw that above, and added the established Yamagat or Yamagate of Summer Kant decision. Not sure what that is. I tried to Google it. I, I found random gates. I'm pretty sure this is more like Kingdom of Summer Kant, right? Let me know if you know. I'm very interested in more flavor, of course. And look at this, added the established Theravada Faith Event Chain in the Burmese region. Shout out to Trent Regular and Nick. I believe that was probably their work. Now, user modding, listen, none of us care. <laughs> none of us understand this, okay? I'm, I I can't explain uh, added equip artifact to own a replace effect. I hope that there will be good things that come from this. I don't know what's going on. Obviously, then there are many changes. There were both changes to the history setup, to cultures, etc. Uh, all of these are pretty cool. What we have here is adjusted empire borders in the area formerly covered by the South 
Baltic Empire. Uh, I, I don't really, you can see that it's only this. So like, this is the only mention of the Sol uh, South Baltic Empire. Did they remove it? Is it, is it gone? I don't know. Let's find out. Uh, bug fixes. Fixed a lot of various issues with hold court events, which were caused by subsequent events sometimes stealing characters from those ahead in the queue. We had this happen in the playthrough just yesterday, where we had somebody petition us and they were gone. There were three petitioners, but only actually two character sets, meaning that the third one, the initial one, was just gone. I hope that this one will be fixed with this. Fix some cases when a royal court owner dies, but events are still in progress. Avoiding soft locks when visiting dead royal courts. Big fan of this as well, of course. Very much mandatory to fix something that breaks the game. Council task events should now fire again as intended. And fix prince electors needing to hold titles as their primary to vote. Uh, all of these are great fixes, very important fixes, of course. Fix characters living in foreign realms, being invited to feasts, and having such a good time they never go back. I think I've seen this a number of times. Whenever my wives were missing in France or in Venice, I believe I've seen this a number of times. Uh, Visigothic culture now starts with Visigothic codes, very cool, and you can now click the button to adopt the code language in the culture view. So this now finally works. Um, there are of course many other changes, but these were the ones that I personally believe to be the most important ones. Um, with all that being said, I hope that, you know, uh, this is a good patch. I am not a fan at all of tribal courts. I think this is not a good step. I haven't seen any new assets specific to tribal courts, and I don't think that tribal courts are appropriate to begin with. Uh, not a fan. The rest, huge fan. The Throne of Solomon, the lighting changes, everything related to the 3D assets. I mean, this is an absolute beauty, quite frankly. But yeah, that is my look onto these patch notes. I will hopefully see you soon and for the moment later, alligator.